grounds that is the first definition of an altar that it is a place a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds Luke chapter 1 please from verse 10 and 11 just to buttress on that definition the Bible says the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the time of the incense and then verse 11 and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense hallelujah Zechariah the priest having that encounter and an angel comes but the angel comes and stands at the altar at the time of incense so it is a place it is a platform or it is a system that allows interactions between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm on legal basis it is called an altar number two second definition an altar is also a platform for authorization of laws and authorizations of spirits to function upon the earth an altar is a platform for the authorization of laws l-a-w-s and the authorization of spirits to function upon the earth so an altar is a platform that gives authorization to spiritual laws to function an altar is a place a platform that gives authorization for spirits to be able to function the last definition you have that down an altar finally is a platform where covenants are activated and maintained an altar is a platform where covenants are activated and where covenants are maintained i gave you three definitions let me do a quick recap that number one an altar is a place a platform and a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm number two an altar is a platform that authorizes spiritual laws and authorizes spirits to function remember I have taught you that based on the law of territory it is illegal for any spirit to function in the earth realm that does not have a body remember our teaching last last week we stated that this earth was made for men not just men but for entities with physical bodies that means if you do not have a physical body you do not have a legitimate authorization to function on the earth and then if you do not have a human body dominion was not for you are we together dominion is only for spirits that are hosted in human bodies that means even if you are a spirit that is in the body of a lower animal you are authorized to function because of that body but not authorized to walk in dominion so the condition to be a man therefore is that number one you must be a spirit number two that spirit must be hosted in a human body and then number three that spirit must have a solical connection of the mind containing the will emotions and intellect any creature that does not have this combination in one place cannot be called man are we together an altar there are many people who have risen to notable levels of excellence manifesting superhuman abilities and commanding strange levels of results that seem to dumbfound people both in the church as believers and then people outside of the faith life the level of invincibility that is shown in their exploits and their results seem to keep people at a loss how are these people achieving this whether it is in politics and governance, whether it is in business and finance, whether it's in spirituality of all sorts, herbalists and all of that. Now there are those who have lived in denial as to the reality of such a concept of altars. Then there are those who have admitted that there is such a concept, but they are clueless as to the dynamics of the workings of this altar. 
many of us today i submit to you are victims of altars many of us today are more affected by altars than we can imagine and the teaching tonight will open your eyes to see i will be showing you why it is possible to pray and fast over certain issues and then nothing happens many people have tried binding and casting situations many people have tried quoting scriptures and speaking many people have done dry fast all kinds of fast fruit fast and yet certain situations seem to stand and stare them at the face this situation seem to make jesus look powerless seem to make the faith life uninteresting but you see the bible says it is through knowledge that the just will be delivered not through assumptions not through a good heart it takes knowledge i have studied this subject myself and in studying it to prepare um, for this meeting i was amazed at how many other things about altars that i did not even know myself hallelujah now write this down please altars can be physical monuments altars can be institutions altars can be men altars can be non-material platforms i'll take it again altars can be physical monuments like we have in the bible and um you know altars can be institutions that means a whole institution can be an altar altars can be men human entities can be altars and then altars can be non-material platforms that means a platform that is spiritual in context you cannot find any material expression to it and yet it exists are we learning i wrote down here the patriarchs commanded superior levels of dominion on earth because they understood the mystery of altars the patriarchs those who had gone before us commanded superior levels of dominion on earth because they understood the mystery of altars and like i've told you altars allow all kinds of spirits to find expression on earth and to find expression among men altars allow all kinds of spirits to find expression on earth and to find expression among men is someone learning already listen let me tell you the truth if god grants us grace and we understand this revelation and pray the prayers we are praying tonight you will marvel and wonder at the levels of results that you begin to command in your christian life an individual can be a victim of negative altars we're coming there don't write just listen a church can be a victim of negative altars a nation can be a victim of altars individuals businesses and corporations can be victims of altars write this down please the major assignment of an altar the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization please underline it if you are writing using a pen the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic i'll take it again this is a major point i'm expressing now please don't forget this the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and to give continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether it is godly or it is demonic that is the primary assignment of altars the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization 
and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic please look up do you understand the meaning of this 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 point i just stated that the assignment of an altar is number one to give authorization to a spiritual activity but number two to give continuity that means anything that is recurrent and remains is powered by an altar this immediately becomes the litmus test to check the presence of altars good or bad are we together please don't forget this one this will be a the foundation of our discussion the major assignment of an altar is to give authorization and continuity to any spiritual activity on earth whether godly or demonic every time god made promises or made a covenant or said he was going to do something to the patriarchs and to their children immediately they would build an altar so that even when they were not there there would be a platform for the continuity of that statement is somebody learning now write this down please you can know the presence of an altar you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region by the consistency of patterns and occurrences you can know the presence of an altar in any life any family and any region by the consistency of patterns and occurrences whether good or bad this is powerful the consistency of patterns the consistency of occurrences whether they are good or bad is the scriptural litmus test for the presence of an altar wow you can know the presence of an altar in any life in any family in any region that means if certain good things keep happening to you regardless the surrounding circumstances there is an altar that is powering that that is happening if certain evils and certain patterns keep reoccurring regardless the effort you are putting is because it is being powered by altars is someone listening for example salvation salvation is being powered by an altar that is why any day and any time anyone confesses Jesus you don't have to be there an angel does not have to be there to supervise it there is an altar already that supports that ordinance that whosoever believes in the name of the Lord that person shall be saved and the altar that powers that statement is the very throne that God sits on are we together now yes that means you don't need to travel from america to nigeria to be saved like to give your life to jesus christ regardless location regardless time regardless age regardless gender you can listen to a message of tl osborne even though the man has died but the message is powered by an altar because the truth is communicating there is from the word of God and if you believe that message you can repent there and give your life to Jesus and the altar that was connected to that statement makes that statement true in your life immediately if salvation were not powered by an altar it would be impossible for all men to be saved another example the blessing of the jewish nation the blessing of the jewish nation is powered by altars that is why some of them as individuals today as a nation when you go to israel many of them still practice judaism but in truth many of them are not born again they have not believed in the lord god of heaven yet that covenant being powered by an altar 
still insist that the Jewish nation will remain on top and above. Whether they are in Israel or they are in Africa, whether they know it or not, they just find out that you can stand with a Jew and there seems to be an advantage that he himself cannot explain. The power of altars. Please pay attention because we will soon come to the one that concerns Africa. Are we together? Look up please salvation is powered by an altar that is why jesus does not have to come physically and start running from room to room and say look at me i'm the jesus you are talking about are you interested from one position and one location the effect becomes the same everywhere his name is called now an example of negative altars are you ready the one we saw is an example of positive altars an example of negative altars all kinds of wrong addictions all kinds of negative patterns are powered by altars all kinds of wrong addictions please write all kinds of negative patterns are only there and remain because there are altars that power them let me list a few of them for you Listen, if I am listing this and it ever affects you, just know that whether you admit it or not, it confirms the presence of an altar. Are you ready? Number one, it, mysterious diseases and infirmities. The presence of mysterious diseases and infirmities, whether as an individual or a family or a territory, powered by altars mysterious diseases and infirmities usually these diseases you see are also passed through the bloodline father had it mother had it brothers had it now there may be a medical explanation and medicine is there as a symbol of god's mercy but i am telling you using higher spiritual intelligence those sicknesses can only remain because of the presence of altars number two all kinds of sexual perversions please write all kinds of sexual and immoral perversions are powered by altars it does not matter how sincere the victims are that's not the issue is that there is an altar that powers it all kinds of sexual perversions that's why you can hear of stories of an adult you know doing something funny with a minor and a baby and it does not make human sense but this is about altars i'm sorry to say it but this is also what has generated into these various versions of perversions we have in our society the victims do not even know what is drawing them that's the point i'm trying to tell you it's not just about your will alone is that there is a force that is operating on legal basis number three depression and mental health issues most of this depression and mental health issues now there are things that have to do with fatigue and all of that but for most people they do not know that most mental health issues need more than counseling it is the presence of an altar when jesus saw madmen listen watch what the madman in gadara Look, notice what the spirit did he was always hiding in caves and hurting himself depression and mental health issues number four witchcraft and idol worship here you go witchcraft and idol worship you will be amazed at how many christians today love god sincerely but something keeps drawing them back to still revisit foundations of idolatry it does not matter whether you're a man of god it does not matter whether you're a businessman there's something in you that still makes you comfortable there's one small portrait in the village that was kept there it was handed from great grandfather to grandfather and they said if you speak to that portrait it can bring results you can serve god and give but when the going gets tough as you travel to the village as you are passing you just see that thing 
and something within you witchcraft and idol worship look up please there are you've you've seen us pray for these people during miracle services there are many people some of you looking at me right now based on the ordinances of priesthood you are supposed to be the one they hand over some of those things to but you just said i've given my life to jesus christ i'm not interested and the altar said it's not about whether you are interested or not find out how i came into being first and you just generally sweep it under the carpet and he says all right you go and you find out all kinds of things begin to happen i'm not scaring you there is victory at the end of this teaching but you must know what is there you don't gain victory by running away from the truth you gain victory by knowing the truth stagnation and delays alters stagnation and delays alters believe me alters near success syndrome have you seen that happen to people i i look for a word there's there's no better word that captures it the way i want if i bring all this english you will not really get it i need you to get it the way it is near success syndrome that people see it but never possess it there are people like that you do an interview to the last point then you don't go again you start a business and negotiate to the last point then you don't go again you will always see the beginning of things but never see the end of them it's an altar believe me you can look around and know people in your life who are excellent starters but the power to continue and even finish anything is not there they can start 30 businesses they will never be able to keep one past two or three months they can start different companies they can even start ministries and yet it does not work altars barrenness and short-lived success barrenness of all kinds especially biological barrenness now and short-lived success short-lived success that means you enjoy every blessing but it does not last there are some of you here the moment you see good things happen to you you even start crying because you know as a track record that good things never remain you buy a car as soon as you are rejoicing in two weeks that car will now hit a convoy are we together they will bring you out and say you should sit down on the ground first and you find what is wrong with me as soon as you are preparing to go abroad your visa just comes out next thing you will see police they will say theft was happening somewhere and they join you with all those to interrogate for the next two months your passport has been seized until you find out what is going on i know you may be laughing but pay attention short-lived success barrenness how many people do you find Th there's nothing medically wrong with them there is no reason why they should not have children some of them may go as far as getting pregnant and if you ask them and they're honest they will tell you about their experiences somewhere within that pregnancy period here come strangers visitors in the night either molesting them or doing some kind of thing and that ends it there are many more expressions but these ones are some of the major expressions can i be sincere with you there are pastors who are victims of altars there are families that are victims of altars this thing does not necessarily have to do with being a wicked person or being kind this is why god is granting us spiritual intelligence God is my witness and I lie not. Years ago, I traveled somewhere and I met someone. I asked him, what does he do? And he says he works with a security company, PhD. God is my witness. I mean it. PhD.
phd and out of frustration he said he, he can't leave his family like this he has to just find a way i said no now this this cannot be god because in terms of value that person has paid his price do you agree with me on that so it's not about laziness i know someone who got a huge contract the person was so happy and was rejoicing just when they mobilized them a bit he now secured a loan from the bank to add it and began the contract and they revoked it abcd we discovered your documents are not complete and they left that person with a pile of debt with the bank In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is not of God and everything being powered by any altar, this is the night where we will scatter it once and for all. Please sit down. Hallelujah. So you know the presence of an altar in a life by the continuity of patterns and occurrences not to play with your mind but great grandmother was raped grandmother was raped mother was raped different scenarios the same effect it is more than just coincidences you are the only one who is calling it coincidences have you seen people who spend 10 15 years abroad even 20 years and you go and find them in the village sitting down and you are saying sir tell me the story they will tell you in 19 this and that i was in america i was a friend with the mayor i was a friend with this one i even got an award they will take you back to enter into that clay house and show you all the things and you are saying from whence come this poverty and he said my dear son you don't know and the young man will be gyrating just a fresh born again person and say it doesn't matter i pity you and return back 10 years later to that same place and wonder what is wrong listen how many of you know about a man called jabez in the bible ladies imagine if jabez was your life partner no, 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 don't insult the guy. He won at the end of it. I'm just saying, imagine. You would be surprised that after dancing and rejoicing, you start going down and not know why. Can I tell you this? These are some of the things that prophets detect by prophecy. And because many of them, respectfully speaking, are not sound in the world, they call the victims witches and wizards. They are just detecting the presence of altars, but it does not mean the individuals are necessarily bad. It is true. Association can help you partake of altars that is upon the lives of people too. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. When the realm of the spirit is against you, it will also be against anything that supports you. When God was against Jonah, remember Jonah chapter 1. Jonah was running away. He simply entered a boat. All the people who were the passengers there did not know that such and such a person. Now forget who was against him. The most important thing is that the realm of the spirit was against him. You would think he only jumped into the belly of the fish alone. But they had lost things because of one person. The same way Jesus was inside a boat and those who would have died were preserved because of his presence. Do you know the meaning of that? It means because of what you are learning tonight, everybody around you will now finally be a partaker of this blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. The formula always remains that when he sends a word to Jacob, he intends that it lightens upon Israel. So for some of you, as you are listening right now, the Holy Ghost is telling you, this is what I've been trying to tell you. Are you seeing what kept mama down? Are you seeing what kept your dad? What kept your siblings? Now you are the reed that God is taking out of fire. It's important to pay attention for the sake of those who have gone ahead of you and for the sake of those who are coming. 
Please sit down. Go and read the history of America and find out that when they are where that nation was about to be born, they erected an altar and called upon the name of the Lord officially and said, God, we are officially saying you are the God. That's why regardless what happens, that altar still speaks. Because based on the law of cause and effect, many nations should not be where they are economically. Yet there is an altar that seems to veto these limitations. Hallelujah. Now please look up. Many of our forefathers, great grandfathers in and territories, from the sincerity of their heart, many of them out of fear of being victims of wars, poverty, and whatever, many of them went to meet the devil because it was these deities that many of them knew. And so they met them on legal basis and had all kinds of fraternities and partnerships. And different altars were enacted. Today, the people who were part of that program are long gone. But altar does not know time. No. 10 years is only 10 years to you. 200 years is only 200 years to you. Read your Bible. Where Jacob had an encounter in chapter 28. That was where Abraham built an altar. Abraham built an altar there. Now, his great-grandson, his, his, great, his um, great-grandson, came there and slept in the night whether he slept or not that altar was working every day it just so happened that he now slept and found something that was already there was a procession angels ascending and descending is someone learning Altars can affect individuals. Altars can affect families. The same way, the same way, authentic godly altars. Listen, there are many, many people who turn their homes into altars. They were not very born again, but they supported missionaries. They turned spaces in their houses to become a place for missionaries to come and stay during crusades they did not know what they were doing and some of those missionaries prayed there in their silence and said oh god i am praying that long after i am gone let the great grandchildren of these people not know shame since they supported the gospel you will find one rough boy one day roaming around not being interested in jesus and the speakings from that altar will come and fish him he will find his way to a crusade ground and you'll be wondering what happened have you seen many people who are not serious with god and yet it seems like god cannot leave them they will run away you will still find them when you want to prophesy they are the first you will bring out and they are not serious you yourself will be annoyed and say what is this thing that god is always looking for them hi precious saints for adventure, your issue or your case, your predicament, situations around your nation, your state, from wherever you're watching us from, that have proven to be defiling or uh, proving wrong medical uh, reports, or maybe it has defied so many instances, so many advice, encouragement, or so many solutions. One thing is very certain that the Word of God remains infallible, very, very infallible. It can be applied to every situation. And then you get to realize that God will be so instant in this world. That is why the psalmist calls him the ever-present help in time of need. A man who we can run to can fail us. A family member can still fail us. A man who we can um, have a regard of high esteem in our hearts may tend to fail us. But one sure thing is that God cannot fail. The psalmist recognized God as his ever-present help. And so I will encourage and admonish you to anchor your trust in God, to hing your trust, your, your hope in God because He's our perfect anchor. He's the God that neither sleeps nor slumber. He's always there with us, dear for us, dear even in every kind of mess or situation we find ourselves. 
Remember the case of Joseph. The Bible said while Joseph was in the prison, that God was there with him. God did not leave Joseph to just be there. He was there in the prison. I could imagine how the Almighty God would squeeze himself to be in the prison. In other words, God took the posture or the position of even a prisoner because he loved Joseph because he has found a man who can draw his attention even down to the depths of the prison. And so, therefore, it is in our interest to also see that you become the fullness of God. You become what God wants you to truly become. And to be this, we admonish you to be part of our community. And simply by hitting the subscribe button, this will enable you to be part of us and turning on the notification bell, which will also enable you to receive notifications on our current day uploads. This will help us enlarge and build a community and build a one family that will see to it that Jesus reigns over all our affairs and that Jesus reigns over all we do. We do love you so much and we're pleased to have you back. God bless you and we'll be delighted to see you in our next video. Thank you so, so much. We love you so much. God bless you so much. See you in our next video. And don't forget to please share this video to loved ones, family and friends. And also let them know and get to see that Jesus is doing good in our midst. Someone somewhere out there needs to hear this message. See you. God bless you.